Hello guys, this is Tina. Did you have a good rest during the weekend? Um, anyway, let's start. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the custom bean validation annotation because we are using the Hibernate validator uh, implementation of the bean uh, validation 2.0. But sometimes you cannot find what you want. You cannot find the actual annotation which match your requirements, right? In this kind of cases, you have to do some uh, customized uh, coding. So uh, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to uh, create your own customized uh, bin validation annotation and to fulfill your feature. So we I'm going to continue using the Spring validation that uh, project. And uh, I took a look at before the video starts, which here uh, we have an integer uh, field for the age. We also have a birthday. Uh, I think um, mo for a user, your birthday and your age should be matched, right? Should be matched. Suppose I said I born in 2000, 2000 but the age the user put here is uh, 10 which doesn't make sense because they don't match each other. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a bin, create your own bin validation annotation, which will check if the two fields are actually match each other. So for this feature, uh, I will create a package first called uh, validation. Okay, organize our uh, annotation and the validator class. First, I'm gonna create an annotation called uh, um, age. How about just call age, okay? Uh, this is a way how to define an annotation in Java. And uh, for this annotation, we have some meta information. First thing is where this annotation you can apply. You can apply this annotation on class on um, method, on um, fields, or on um, method arguments, you have a tail, okay? So first one is called target. And let's using, we will put this annotation on the class level. So we are using type, okay? Element type, type. Type means class, which means you can add this annotation on the class here. You can add it here, okay? If you're using a, a field, then you can add on the fields, like a size will be field. If you want to be added on the method, you can use the element type method. Second one is, when do you want this uh, annotation to be processed? Is it during compiler time or during runtime? Like uh, override that annotation will be compiler time. It, during compiler time, it will check if it actually overwrite the parent's method or not. But for this annotation, we are gonna use, we want to, to be processed at runtime. So we are using retention policy, which is the runtime, okay? For bin validation annotation, you have to also tell who will actually process the logic. Okay, you need to have a class to process the logic. Is it valid or not valid? So here you have another thing called a constraint, and here you will give a class, okay, uh, which actually process the logic, valid or not the lo valid logic. Next one here, uh, if it failed, you have to give some message, right? And uh, during, uh, based on the specification, you have to give a message method, and uh, you give a default message. You can use an externalized or you can use a, just a hard-coded string here. I will show you two ways, okay? First, I will say, this is default message, age doesn't age and the birthday fields of birthday doesn't match. How about it? Okay. And, uh, uh, if you want to find a bin validation annotation, you have to match the specification. And during, based on the specification, you have to add two other methods, okay? Uh, it's a little bit long, I will just copy and paste here. Uh, 
these two methods we put it here is too much the specification and the message method put it here is to if it, you failed then it will show this default message and you can always customize okay Next one, we have to write a class which actually process age annotation. How to do that? Create a class. Let's call age validation, okay? And you need to implement one class called a constraint validator. Constraint validator asks you give two values for the type argument. The first type of argument value is what's the annotation okay it's the annotation of age second one is when when you using age annotation on the class you should give the type okay i using the annotation age on the class so you got you have to give what's the type of the class here is the user Suppose your age annotation also support for the fields. Suppose you add age annotation here, and you have to take a look at the age annotation is applied on this field, and what's the type of the field? It's a string type. Then you change this one to be string type. Okay. I will remove it. We only support for the class level, and for the class, the type is user. That's why. Here you're using the annotation and here using a type, which is your annotation applied on. Now I will go back to my age class and change this one to validate by age validation dot class. So this age validation class will process age annotation at runtime. After you implement this uh, constraint validator, you have to provide the implementation for two methods. One is is valid. Is valid is the actual uh, place you put your business logic to check if it's uh, pass your validation or not. Okay, and initialize from here. You can get some. Um, attribute values you set on the edge annotation. I will show you after we done this one, okay? After we done the business logic. So here, what we're gonna do is we have to check um, if our birthday and age actually match or not, right? So how do using the birthday to calculate the date? There's uh, one thing called the period. You use period, there's a method called between. Between you pass two local date. The first one is our birthday, right? And second one is a current date. Current date, you're using local date now. Then it will give you a period. P, okay? And then you can compare. In the period, you can use in get years. And uh, then you can compare the years with the age. Actually, the user input. If if they match, then you return true. If they don't match, then you return false, right? So I'm gonna do here. P dot get years. Then equals equals user dot get age. Okay. So if they match each other, that means pass the validation. It will return true. If it doesn't match each other, then it will return false automatically. So, so far we have done create a bin validation annotation, okay? And these two methods are to match the specification. I remember a little bit, these two methods actually are used for the ordering, how to, when the spring to process your annotation, how to, which one will go first, which one will go the last, okay? And next one, we have a validator class which actually process our logic. Okay, actually process your logic. Here we check the year and the age if the birthday and the age are match. Uh, next step, what you need to do is add the use this annotation on this user class, and then that's it. Then I'm gonna 
deploy the application and see if everything works. Okay, so we know uh, I don't have a root hand, uh, handler. We should go to user app. I will make all other values, which is match birthday is 2000, but the age here I will using like, uh, uh, how about 40, okay. And street and uh, state and zip code. So here, uh, it based on my our calculation, so that my age should be 19, right? But I put a 40, which doesn't match. Uh, if everything works correctly, it should say uh, age and birthday doesn't match, right? And you can see age and birthday doesn't match. This is uh, defined by uh, our default message here. Okay, so now let's go back to the browser. If I change this one to be 19 and they match each other now, so it should pass, pass the validation. Everything works. And the next one I want to show you is, suppose you don't want to hard code the value. What you can do is you can give a key, okay? Age, error, message. And this one you can put inside your error message or properties file. And here we are using age and birth date, birth date doesn't match. This one is from externalized message, message file. Okay. And I'm gonna run again. Deploy. And then um, we can gonna go to the browser and uh, go back to the ad page. And uh, I type the values again, okay, birthday. And they don't match using 40 and DBA street zip code. Five two five five six. Okay, so now that the match. See which uh, we're gonna test if it actually pick the error message from the properties file. Yes, it picked successfully. Okay, and uh, I think you can also uh, override by yourself. Let's uh, take a look at here on the user. You can also add a message, and we can use an externalized one, which is a custom. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I have to use the code. Use the codes first, okay? Custom age arrow uh, dot uh, age dot message, okay? How about that one? And then go here, copy. This is a key, and go to our properties file, and our using age doesn't match. But here I will using a customized from message file. And I have some dots here, okay? So we expect it's gonna pick this one, not this one, because we customized. Okay, deploy successfully. Let's go back to the browser and uh, make a get request to show you the form tina this one birthday and i'm using 40 doesn't match admin street uh, state and zip code when i click add you will see okay you will see age and birthday doesn't match from practice file this one is because i have a mean annotation right let me change to be 50. Add. You will see this one is your customized. So you can use a default one, or you can also customize uh, uh, by setting the message properties value. And uh, now let me change this one to be 90 and click. Let me change to be DBA or other means also fine. Add it passed the validation. 
So uh, this is how to create a bin uh, validation annotation. And uh, if you have any questions on uh, this concept, you can leave a comment below. And uh, thank you. See you next time.